Hi, I'm Naomi. Hi, I'm Emily. We're both speech and language therapists and we work at the Princess Royal Hospital in Orpington. I also live in Bromley and have done for three years. Um, I think it's a great place to live because there's lots of greenery, but there's great transport links into London. I really enjoy working at the Princess Royal Hospital um, because it's a really friendly environment and I have a great team here. Emily and I got into speech and language therapy in very different ways. So um, I didn't find out about speech and language therapy until I was a bit older. Um, I was a rehab assistant on a um, stroke ward and I worked with speech and language therapists, physios and occupational therapists. Um, and after seeing what speech and language therapists do, I was really interested in going down that route. I found out about speech and language therapy while I was doing my A-levels. Um, so I went straight from doing my A-levels um, to university. I completed a four-year course um, in speech and language therapy and then qualified as a speech therapist to start working. Um, and I think that's why we both wanted to talk to you today. Um, to raise awareness about speech and language therapy um, so that children from younger ages and, and those of you at school know what speech and language therapy is um, and may consider it as a career option. So you might be wondering what a speech and language therapist actually does. Well we work with people of all age ranges and we work on communication difficulties and swallowing difficulties. People are often quite confused as to why speech and language therapists work on the swallow, but it's because the same muscles that help you to speak are the same ones that help you to swallow. Naomi and I both work with adults in the hospital setting. The, pa the patients that we work with often have difficulties with swallowing and communication. Difficulties with swallowing can arise due to the weakness of muscles or changes to nerves that control the swallow. This can have an impact on the food and drink going down the, the wrong way. That means sometimes going into the lungs rather than the stomach, and this can cause chest infections. Communication difficulties um, can arise from having a, think, something like a stroke, a uh, brain injury, um, and can affect the voice, speech, or language of somebody. We also work with patients who have long-term conditions um, like dementia, Parkinson's disease, and motor neurons disease that all affect speech and swallowing. We're, there are speech and language therapists that, that work outside of the hospital setting um, they work in the community and go out to see patients in their own homes or in nursing homes, residential homes. There are speech and language therapists that work with adults um, who have mental health issues um, and also in rehab settings who help to try to re rehabilitate patients after having a stroke or brain injury. If you were to become a paediatric speech and language therapist, you might work in a range of settings too. So some uh, speech and language therapists who work with children uh, work in schools, they work in clinics, they might work in prisons, uh, and they might work in special schools for children who have complex needs with disabilities. I would recommend speech and language therapy as a career for many reasons. A few of those reasons being, you get to work as part of a team, a smaller speech and language therapy team where you're well supervised and that team is part of a bigger team where you work with lots of other different professionals such as physiotherapists, occupational therapists, dietitians, nurses and medical teams in different specialities like ear, nose and throat, respiratory, cardiology and every day is different so we work with a variety of patients we can work from with those that are babies, to toddlers, adolescents, to adults. And here in the hospital, no day is the same. We see different patients with lots of different conditions and we're helping the medical team to figure out what might be wrong with the patient and how we can best manage them. Speech and language therapy is a very rewarding career. We can help patients with their conditions to improve quality of life. 
And after university, learning is ongoing. We have to keep up to date with recent evidence and research to make sure that we are delivering the best care to our patients. You might be thinking, what do I need to do to become a speech and language therapist? There are many different skills that you need to become a speech therapist. These include being a good communicator, a good listener, a team player, and being passionate about helping others. It's really important that you showcase these skills in your application. You can do this by giving examples of things that you may have done, such as volunteering for the Stroke Association or for MENCAP or other charities that, that support speech and language therapy. It's also important to have a good understanding of what a speech and language therapist does. You can do this by shadowing a speech and language therapist and spending some time to really see them in action. I found this really beneficial before applying for the course. Um, it really gave me an insight into what speech and language therapist does and it really made me confident that that's what I wanted to do as a career. I also did some volunteering before I became a speech and language therapist. So I volunteered for the Stroke Association, just supporting uh, someone who had communication difficulties to just have conversation as part of their daily life. Um, I also did other jobs which helped me to understand a bit more about speech and language therapy, like working as a rehab assistant, um, and working with adults with learning disabilities. Um, but you could also become a speech and language therapy assistant because that would help you understand the day-to-day -day role of a speech and language therapist. Once you start the course um, of speech and language therapy, um, your, the course will be mixed into lectures and also placements. Um, on these placements, you'll be put in various settings as we discussed earlier, um, and you'll be supported by a speech and language therapist on how to put the theory into practice. As Emily mentioned, there is a lot of variety within the day's work for speech and language therapists. What usually happens when we first get into work is that we check our referrals, and that just means how many patients have been referred to our service because they need our support. After that, we prioritise these patients based on the greatest need and who is at the highest risk and then how much we can support and have an impact on them as speech and language therapists. After we've prioritised all of our patients, our day is split up into clinical time, which is face-to-face -face time with the patients, uh, going on to various wards. So you might be on a respiratory ward, you might be on a COVID ward, or you might be on a stroke ward, for example. Um, during that clinical time, we're doing things like diagnosing um, speech and language communication needs or diagnosing swallowing needs or we could be giving therapy and that includes supporting the patient's family on how to manage their needs. Our non-clinical time is time that is allocated to us to improve the service and that can be doing things like audits, it could be doing things like reading up on most recent research so that our, our practice is evidence-based or it could be doing things like supervision and that is just seniors supporting juniors in, in becoming better clinicians. One of the things I find most difficult about my profession is managing people's expectations. A lot of the time we're seeing very sick patients or people who were very well before they came into hospital and now aren't doing so well and sometimes the patients themselves or their, or their families expect us to be able to fix what's wrong with them. But actually, a lot of the work we do comes around compensating for the need. So, you know, finding strategies to help deal with the issues that are at hand. Um, sometimes people don't understand that um, and can be understandably upset that we, we are unable to fix um, the impairment. But it's kind of about us managing those expectations and supporting quality of life over fixing or curing the, the need.